Let's learn how to create Docker containers, push it into Docker Hub, and deploy it into Kubernetes cluster. This video is a part of a series of videos where we want to show how we can monitor applications using Prometheus. So we started by creating a sample minute core application, and now we want to dockerize it and publish it into uh, a Kubernetes cluster. And later we want to show how we can uh, configure Prometheus in order to scrape those metrics from our application and then view this uh, those metrics into uh, a dashboard using Grafana. I hope you have already watched my uh, introductory videos that shows how the uh, Prometheus works, how it can scrape um, metrics from uh, the Kubernetes uh, cluster, whether those are the nodes or the Docker containers, the pods or the jobs or so on. So let me switch into VS Code where we start containerizing the app, then deploying it into Kubernetes. So first of all, here I have the source code for my app. This is an SPNet Core application where here I have uh, I enabled Prometheus inside this app. And I have added um, a custom counter that this will count actually the number of views for my index page. Now I want to dockerize this application. For that, I need to have Docker installed in my machine and I also need to have the Docker file. I have added the Docker file in the application's uh, source code. So here, if you go to, um, uh, to the source code that I'm using in this demo, which is available um, on uh, GitHub on this uh, link right here, you'll be able to see from within the web app the content for the uh, Docker file. So this is the Docker file we'll be using today in order to Dockerize the app. I have that Docker file in VS Code. So this Docker file uses the multi-stage uh, configuration for Docker files. So it will use two Docker container images. First one will be used in order to uh, compile and to build the application. That's the uh, um, the image that have the SDK of .NET Core 3 installed. So we'll copy the application source code into that image. Then we'll build the app inside that container. Once the build is done, we'll have the package for the app, the DLLs. The, uh, and then we'll copy those DLLs from this built image into the runtime image. That's the first image we use right here. That also will run .NET 3. And that's the image that will actually run the app. Let's start running this Docker file in order to generate the Docker container for our ISP.NET Core application. For that here, I need to use the Docker command. So I have already started Docker in my machine. And now I'll switch to the command line. Here I'm using hyper. So let's first make sure we are in the same directory where we have the Docker file. Then I run the command docker build in order to build the, uh, uh, the Docker file. And I need to add uh, a tag here. So I want to tag my container using my Docker Hub ID. So make sure you have already a Docker Hub ID. I have already created an account. It's a free account you can create for free. And this is my Docker Hub ID. So I need to use that. Then slash the name of the uh, container you want to create. Let's say this one app monitoring. And for the tag, I'll use Prometheus. Then we need to specify the path for the Docker file because here we are already in the uh, folder where we have the Docker file. I'll just put the dot. Don't forget that. Then run this command. And now you should be able to see that um, Docker have run at the different steps described inside the Docker file. And at the end, it did successfully generated the container. Now let's try to run this container and see if it works as expected. Let's clear this and let's run the command docker run. With docker run, we need to map the ports that we want uh, to use in order to access the container from our local uh, host. So here I'll use dash p and I'll use the port 5. 5, 5 from my uh, development machine and they want to map to the port that is used inside my container which is in my case here 80 why 80 because in the docker file i have exposed the port 80 
and I want to run this on TCP, then the name of my container. Hit enter. And now my container is running and it should be running on port 555. So now if I go to my browser, open localhost on that port number, I should be able to see my app is running there. And now if I go to slash metrics, where I want to get the different uh, metrics exposed by my app, here I can see that list of those different metrics along with my custom uh, metrics called my counter. Now that we have created the container, let's now go to push it inside Docker registry on Docker Hub. So to do that, First, make sure we have a Docker Hub uh, account. I have already created one. Then we need to log in to Docker Hub. So coming back to the command line, let's stop running this app. Let's clear this thing. And then we need to run Docker uh, login in order to uh, log in to our Docker Hub account. Let's do that. I have already logged in. Otherwise, it will ask you for your username and your password to use it for your uh, Docker Hub account. Now we can run the command docker push in order to uh, push the container that we have created. So paste the name you have for uh, your container, hit enter. And now my container is uploading into docker help. And now once the image was pushed onto Docker Hub. I should be able to see here if I go to my Docker Hub account, refresh, I should be able to see my new image is now available right here, white uh, web app monitoring. If I click on it, I should be able to see the tag that I have used. Now that the Docker container is available on Docker Hub, let's go to the next step, which is deploying this container into Kubernetes cluster. So to do that, I have already created a Kubernetes cluster inside Microsoft Azure. So from here, I have crea created a managed uh, cluster using AKS, Azure Kubernetes Service. But you can do that also from um, using a Minikube in your local development machine, or you can use any other cloud provider to provision a managed uh, cluster. I have also connected to my cluster using the Cube uh, CTL system. So, and they have also um, installed uh, Cube CTL, which is the CLI tool that will be used to connect into the uh, cluster. So, for that, if here I go to run, for example, Cube CTL get nodes, I'll be able to see that in this cluster I have two nodes running. In order to deploy into Kubernetes, the recommended way, way to do those deployments is through using uh, Kubernetes YAML manifest files. Those YAML files will describe what should be deployed into Kubernetes. What is the image? What is the configuration for that image? If you want to create some uh, networks or services, what those services will connect to which uh, pods and so on. I have already created this yaml file it's available right here inside the uh, application source code so if you go to the github account for this uh, uh, for this application you will find that here with along with the source code with for the web app we have also the yaml configuration file for uh, kubernetes and today we'll be using this yaml in order to deploy the application so let's see the content for this file so we have mainly two uh, d two type of uh, uh, objects that will be created in kubernetes first of all is the deployment the deployment is what it's what's the container that will be deployed for that we have a reference to our image which is the image that we have created and deployed in docker hub then we have some other configuration like the container port number, the uh, labels that we want to use in order to reference this application from any other object. For the other objects, we have also the second one is the service. The service is an abstraction over the networking in Kubernetes. So if I want to connect to my container, I cannot do that directly, but I need to create a service on top of my pod or on top of my container. And that service is the one that will go to reroute the traffic into my container. 
For that, you see that the service here uses a selector, which is the app name MVC, which is the label I have used right here. And it will be using a load balancer because I want to expose this application publicly, so I can use load balancer. If I don't need this application to be publicly exposed, like uh, the sample of microservices, for example, I can keep those, uh, um, those pods uh, private inside the cluster. So let's now deploy this YAML file into Kubernetes. For that, I'll go back to the CLI. And from here, let's make sure I'm inside the same uh, folder where I have my YAML file. Then I run the command kubectl apply dash f, then the name of that file, web deploy service YAML. Let's run that. And now it tells me that Kubernetes received that file. It is configured to run it there. Now, if I try to get all the pods running in my cluster with running the command kubectl get pods, kubectl get pods, from here you'll see that I have my two uh, pods running my uh, MVC deployment app. Now let's try to access that app. For that, we'll need to get the public IP address for our application. So if I run kubectl get services, this will return all the list of the services that are created inside my uh, cluster. So if I look for MVC service, which is the name of the service that I have uh, deployed, we will find this IP address. So let's copy that IP address and let's open it in a new window right here run it and here it is our application running in kubernetes on azure now if i try to access the list of the available metrics from within the, my application i'll go to slash metrics and from here here are the prometheus metrics exported by my application running in kubernetes and here i can also see my custom uh, my custom counter which is my counter, which displays the number of times for, uh, uh, for um, that the index page was shown or was requested in my app. So that was all for this demo. Don't remember, you can get the application source code from uh, GitHub inside this, uh, um, inside this uh, GitHub uh, repo. And don't forget also to watch my other videos about that will explain how Kubernetes works, how DevOps works, how um, microservices uh, uh, works, and so on. I have also some courses available on Udemy. If you want to, I can give you a, a free coupon to watch my uh, courses. And keep tuned for the next videos where we'll see how to uh, install Kubernetes or sorry, install Prometheus and Kubernetes cluster in order to scrape the different metrics from our application and from the cluster and then display those metrics in uh, a dashboard using Grafana. So thank you and see you next time. Bye bye.